Hello again, everybody. I'm Hi C, and this is Toku Rev, your introduction to Tokusatsu movie and TV shows to help you decide what you want to spend your time watching. Since that's more or less been my standard introduction for the last five episodes, it's about time I stay true to my word and do a first on Toku Rev and actually talk about a movie. Movie reviews will flow a little different than Tokusatsu full series TV show reviews. So come take a trip into the black and white ecstasy of Zebra Man. Takashi Miike is one of the most notable directors for Japanese media in the West. My original contact with his body of work was first with Audition and then with Ichi the Killer. Like most people, I always summed him up as a horror filmmaker, and while I saw a few of his other pivotal works, I always had him boxed in, when in reality he's less of a Wes Craven and more of a Quentin Tarantino, with a wide filmography incorporating low art and high concept together by blending genre tropes until they fuse into something interesting and new. So when I learned that Takashi had a tokusatsu-inspired film, I was all over it. So, this is Zebra Man. Yes. All is not well in the Yachi Award of Yokohama. Bearded seals are swimming upstream, crime and arson is on the rise, and defense agents have itchy genitals. <laughs> Oh, and there's a Lobster Man serial killer on the loose. Fantastic. The Japanese Defense Agency has dispatched agents to investigate the strange goings-on. This investigation has led to a school with an uninteresting teacher. Shinichi, our star and protagonist, is a grade 3 supervisor, father, and husband who is disrespected by his students, children, and wife. <laughs> He is a meek man who has never really achieved anything in his life. He commands no authority and continuously floats into the void of life, daydreaming about being something more that he knows he'll never be. His only respite is in his office, where he works in secret on his sacred Zebra Man outfit. Zebra Man being a tokusatsu costume superhero show that premiered in the 1970s and quickly got cancelled, only lasting six episodes. But Shinichi has been obsessed with it ever since. His creation of the Zebra Man cosplay outfit is his escape from his failures in life. He quietly tries to reenact scenes and calling out his favorite moves from the show, while dropping his favorite catchphrases. You get to see some clips from the fake show, and it is the perfect love letter to Toku. From the show's theme song, to the acting, to the cheap enemy costumes, it all plays really well and tricks you into thinking this was a genuine show. Zebra Man has a zebra bike, replicating the look of the 1970s Kamen Rider series or Toei's version of Marvel's Spider-Man. It's really a sight to behold, and Shinichi's homemade folk art version of the show's costume really echoes everything about the early 2000s cosplay world. There's just something super charming about all of it. Shinichi starts to stare off at a soda machine outside and is trying to dare himself into going out in public as Zebra Man, but can't bring himself to do it. This is his escapism, and he doesn't think he could take public ridicule. At least not until we're introduced to the new student, Shinpei. Shinpei is bound to a wheelchair and quietly obsesses over a superhero he found on an online blog, Zebra Man. Shinichi finds Shinpei drawing a superhero in his notebook. Shinichi forms a deep bond, giving him inspiration to finally travel outside in his Zebra Man outfit to show it off to Shinpei. Along the way, he finds himself face to face with the serial killer, Lobster Man. Shinichi is scared and doesn't want to be the next victim of Lobster Man's claws. Or scissors. He's backed into a corner with no other option but to fight in an attempt to defend himself. But to Shinichi's surprise, he has powers he never knew he had, slowly building up to call out his battle moves like he's been doing in secret. And it works. He has magical fighting powers and sends the Lobster Man running away. You learn through the show that Zebra Man wasn't just a TV show. It was actually the telling of an ancient prophecy. The savior of the world. Zebra Man. From here, Shinichi starts to fight crime and discover the secrets of the Zebra Man prophecy. Drifting in and out of fantasy, Shinichi forms a bond with Shinpei's mom, going as far as to imagine her as his sidekick, the Zebra Nurse. <laughs> Uh, 
Uncovering slowly the real threat of an alien invasion out to destroy the world, only Zebra-Man can take them down, but only if he can discover the rest of the prophecy from the cancelled TV show. The production of Zebra-Man is a bit mixed, but it all works for me. The special effects range from really fun and interesting to CG copies of Flubber. When they use dummies or wire effects to give life to the superhero powers, it can be really fun. And that's the best way to describe the production. It's fun. If you're a fan of Toku, you quickly recognize the tropes that they're mimicking and accept all of the silliness that tends to go with them. All the camera work and shots are well composed, with a darker film grain that makes it feel like the bigger budget movie that it is. It's always lighthearted and rarely gives you a peek into the ultraviolence of Miyake's more popular works. The replication clips of the 1970s shows are probably my favorite part, and I am beside myself in love with them. If you told me this was a real Toku series, that ran alongside Battle Fever J or Kamen Rider V3, I would totally believe you. This film is for Toku fans. My major complaint with it as a production is that it can drag. There are a lot of shots that work but are uninteresting and hold on for far too long before changing frames. It is also heavily lopsided when it comes to the action and drama scenes. The action scenes, while fun and exciting, are usually punctuated with really long bouts of story development, and often it's unneeded. When it's Zebraman horse kicking his way to victory, Victory, it feels great, but always short-lived. It needed more action scenes to balance out the story. And I feel like I need to mention that the CG creature design is god-awful, but I get the feeling it's 100% intentional and I can totally just roll with it. They just look like flubber. Little flubbers that turn into big flubbers. But the one thing I love unconditionally about Zebra Man is its music. The music is so dang fun. From the Zebra Man theme. <laughs> to the closing credits. It's just so catchy that it hasn't left my head. But can I suggest Zebra Man? Well, that's a yes and a no. Ultimately, I can say this is a bad movie that doesn't really work. I don't have a lot of friends who are into Toku, but I always had a bunch of film nerds around me who were into Takashi McKay. Unfortunately, this movie is only a good time if you understand what it's satirizing. I went into this hoping that it would be fun, and it is, but I was also hoping for an adult comedy featuring the Toku tropes that I've come to love. That is definitely Zebra Man's intention, but not what it ultimately achieves. It has all the makings of the film that I wanted it to be, but gets its priorities so out of order that it starts to become a snooze fest. Being a fan of Toku, I can look past this and see the positives and enjoy this movies for the parts that it does well, while accepting its technical inability to carry its own weight. So if you heard about this being a Mia K film and got excited to show your non-Toku friends, proceed with caution. But for me, it's a really interesting piece of work in a filmography that I deeply appreciate. As of this recording, I have yet to watch Zebra Man 2, Attack on Zebra City. I do intend to watch this relatively soon in hopes that it fixes some of the problems that I found in Zebra Man. So I'll make another toku rev on that when the time comes. As for my recommendation, I'm someone in their 30s who watches Japanese children's shows unironically, and I can really relate to Shinichi's desire for escapism. Unfortunately, I can also relate to living in a world where you're expected to leave fantasy and imagination behind you, forcing you to push your passions and creativity into the closet. From Power Rangers to Super Sentai, these costume superheroes in spandex have really stoked the flames of creativity that I've found invaluable as an adult. I think with the current film landscape of superhero movies being the literal biggest thing ever, things are changing. Changing. While the real world can be cruel, I'm more than comfortable enjoying what some people might find silly. I feel this is what the journey of Zebra Man was trying to tell us. So if you are a Toku fan, go on and give Zebra Man a watch. Enjoy the good parts. But if you're a casual movie fan, beware. This is a film that ultimately doesn't work. I'm High C with Toku Rev, helping you to find your new favorite show or movie. This was my first time reviewing a standalone film, and I know I waxed a little philosophical towards the end there, so thanks for bearing with me. But I want to send a thank you to everyone for the continued support of Toku Rev. I've gotten a lot of really amazing feedback from the last video on Garo. So if you're a new viewer, please like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for more Toku introductions.